Let's, let's head to the next location. <laughs> What is going on, all my movie, metal-loving, horror guru, comedy-loving badasses out there? It's your boy, Fat Samurai Guy. That's right, Preston back again, hanging out in the movie dojo. But man, I have another legend. That's right, filmmaker, director, hanging out with me today. That's right, the legend himself, Jason Howden. How are you, brother? Welcome. What's up? Thanks so uh, much for having me, Preston. I'm already stuttering, but we'll... <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. it's all right it's all right i flub and stutter all the time it's all good it's all good but thanks again for being here and why is he here you might add well i'm a cool guy he likes to hang out with cool people you know what i mean so you know but we're here to talk about deathgasm 2 gore motherfucking mageddon baby that's what i'm talking about we curse we have fun here god damn it <laughs> that's what it's all about and speaking hell, of fun, hell yes Fudge, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, there you go, there you go. <laughs> New, New Zealand cursing's a lot different. We we say the C word is a good thing, so we're like, oh, yeah, he, he's the total good uh, C word. Uh, there you go. Yeah, so it's just, uh, <laughs> our cursing's a lot, like, weirder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, it's all about having fun here on the channel. And speaking of fun, brother, I absolutely love uh, Deathgasm. It is so much fun, man. And it, oh, it's just thanks, like, thanks so much. Jesus Christ, time has has flown. I was like, really? It's 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 been that been that long ago. But uh, it's it's a it's a cult classic, man. I love it. Yeah, I mean, thank you so much. I mean, it was totally accidental. Uh, I I um, went into it not really expecting anyone to watch it. I think if I had have known that people were going to watch it, I would have like uh, done it differently or. Um, not written a script in one weekend while drunk. I would have <laughs> put a bit more effort into it, but um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's why it, it has like a you know, um, it, it feels like a metal movie. Maybe it needed to be written drunk in a weekend. I don't know, but um, yeah. I mean, I, I yeah, it was yeah. I'm just just honoured that anyone um, you know has watched the film. I mean, that's um, yeah, it's amazing like I, I still can't believe like it has the you know the, the fan response and um you know people getting tattoos and dressing up like the characters for Halloween and um it's it's cool um yeah. I mean there's a huge fan base I mean a, a whole plethora of badasses you know cosplayers people that absolutely love <laughs> and adore this movie man and it, and it's and this movie deserves all the love it gets and all the support because it's an amazing movie. I just rewatched it a couple of days ago. It still holds up, still badass, still funny, and uh, it's all about the metal represent. Oh, thank, thank you. I, I I haven't seen it fully from start to finish since like 2015. I think the last time I, I saw it was in a festival in um I think Vienna um mm. in Austria and um some fan uh just before I was meant to go on stage she had like a, a vaporizer I don't, I don't smoke pot much but it's like yeah why not and then I got <laughs> on st uh, I watched it stoned and I was just like oh my god like I saw every <laughs> every mistake I saw it crystal clear and so I couldn't watch it after that but it's um it's yeah like I I I went back and like got some clips, pulled some clips from it, and I I just started watching it. I was like, oh man, you know, I can I can actually I'm at the point now where I actually can watch it. And yeah, I mean, it was one of those things. It was just you know, it was the perfect storm of like low budget, like low producer interference. Like yeah. they they gave me, um, you know, they just let me loose and let me do what I want, choose the songs. Um, yeah, it was uh, you know, we had like. We were lucky enough to get um, uh, gore left over from Evil Dead, uh, the Evil Dead remake, and like um, uh, from and from Spartacus, they 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 donated some um, rubber dicks for us. Um, Beautiful, yeah. But um, yeah, it was just one of those, and and just like the crew were amazing. The car, everyone was just like, you know, just into it. It was just fun. I didn't really realize it was you know my first. Uh, I'd been on sets, you know, I've been working in the film industry for like twenty years, but. Yeah. Lord of the Rings trilogy you were involved in as well. Oh, that's crazy, yeah. eh? Um, it, it's I'm so old. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was like you know, 
I, I didn't realize how you know the difference between shooting that and then Guns of Kimbo, which had a lot more money and behind it and a lot more like you know people um you know pulling the strings and like you know saying we can't do this and can't do that like it right. really made me um think about how much fun deathism was and and um, right yeah it was uh it was yeah. yeah it was a cool time and i think that carries over on screen when like people were having fun you know um you know it, it has I, I guess i i try and think about why it sort of appeals to people and the only thing i can think about is like it has it has heart to it somehow. Yes, um, it does. And yeah, and yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, you know that Kiwi sense of humor where we're not, you know, we you know, I, I think Kiwis love making fun of Kiwis. You know, it's <laughs> ridiculous seeing like New Zealanders dressing up like Norwegian black metal kids in the woods and trying to act hardcore. And um, yeah, uh, yeah, I think that must be part of it. Yeah, which is one of the you know one of my favorite parts of the movie. That's so funny. It's just they're trying to make their little music video, and it's oh, it's so good. If you guys have not seen Deathgasm, where have you been? Come <laughs> come out from um, from hiding. You know you are tired of the same old same old big budget nonsense, the vanilla generic shit. You are tired of that? You want something badass? You want something that you know you're gonna start headbanging to, baby? Crank it yeah. up to 13, baby. <laughs> That's right. And just have fun. Get a whole group of your friends together. I mean, hey, October's right around the corner. That's right. Celebrating the best holiday of all time. That's right, Halloween. Bust out some deathgasm if you guys have not seen it. Uh, but, yeah, I, I love it. It's badass. The gore. And I, there's, a, there's a little bit of love for martial arts and, and samurai films in that movie. I oh, saw dude, some I'm stuff. I'm a, I'm a massive um so my backstory is when I was a kid I, was, I, I wanted to watch horror movies when I was like 13 but my parents wouldn't let me get any like R rated stuff out except for ninja movies because right. my dad wanted me to get into sports he's like this right. this kid needs to do some sports like martial arts ninjas yeah. are kind of like sports right yeah, yeah. and then so like I was allowed <laughs> to watch ninja movies of like um you know people getting shurikens in the eye and decapitations yeah. it's and, fun and so like it's uh yeah it, it's it's always like it's it's yeah, there's such a, you know, man, I'd love to do a martial arts film. I've just been playing oh. the, the latest Mortal Kombat movie, and it's like, this is something so um, just, 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 you know, just pure about the structure of martial arts movies, you know, and, and, and about how they choreograph them. And yeah, um, yeah. I would love to see you uh, do a martial arts film. Oh, man, that'd be amazing. Or, or yeah. martial arts action horror movie. But in a way, Deathgasm has some stuff in there. You know what I mean? I like think one of my favorite parts of Deathgasm is when Zack straight just goes ballistic with the chainsaws and you have that kind of like ninja run and he poses and in the background, all the body parts of the zombies fall, fall, you know, fall apart. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Jason, Jason likes some martial arts movies. All right. Because we celebrate that here on the channel as well. Martial arts action and horror is what we're all about here. So I was like, I gotta talk to Jason about it. I think he, I think he likes martial arts movies, man. So, <laughs> totally. Yeah, I mean, it's such yeah. a, it's such an anime trope, you know, that the, yeah. the, the hero like falls down, everyone right. falls apart. I, can't pose. I, I think I saw that first on like Ninja Scroll or something, like when I was a kid, and just like, yeah. there's just something about like, uh, you know, and and also I love I love movies that have like, um, you know, a combination of martial arts and like Asian supernatural stuff because it's yeah. so like yeah. it's so different from the Western supernatural. Right. Um, you know, th there's so many different like mythologies and lore mm -hmm. there. And it's um it's always yeah. interesting seeing uh seeing yeah. that like, you know, uh, uh, there's some, you know, like like crazy, like um, is it like uh oh, there's an Indonesian film, um I'm, uh, I'm blanking on the name now, but it's like um yeah. Oh man. Oh, Have you seen the that. Have you seen The Night Comes for Us? Oh no, I haven't. Oh man, when we're done here, brother, go to Netflix and you're gonna you got you're gonna love The Night Comes for Us. It's Indonesian martial arts action movie, but it's so dark and violent. It's done by a horror director. Really? Who's yeah. now doing martial arts action now? Oh, I've uh, got to watch that. Uh, Timo. And oh uh, yes, yes, of course. Yeah, it's so dark, gritty, and violent that it feels in some ways like a horror film. Yeah, so you gotta watch. I highly recommend the night comes for us, man. You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna, yeah. The movie I was blanking on was uh, Mystics in Bali, where it's um, oh. they, they just it just they go to town with the, the crazy effects. Like, there's one part where like it's um, this decapitated head, like this, this um, uh, uh, woman, Westerner woman makes a deal with a, a, a local witch, and um, 
she trains her to do all this like turns into like they turn into pigs it's just but like the, the cool thing about like because i yeah i've been to southeast asia a few times and and like there's this the separation between like the real world and the supernatural world right. is different like uh that they you know like ghosts and they they're mm. a very real thing and part, part yeah. of the culture and it's um yeah it's a, yeah. A, a, amazing um yeah i think we're getting we're getting ideas uh, here, folks. That's right. Ninja, Jason, Ninja Jason, Metal movie. A Ninja J Metal movie. Yeah. Oh my God! Ninja there's Metal movie. There. There's something there. That's gonna be the next Kickstarter. Yes. <laughs> Samurai guy's gonna be there to support <laughs> it. I'm gonna be there to support it. But uh, <laughs> putting together the first Death Gasm film, uh, what was some of the inspirations for the first movie? I mean, obviously there was a little bit of Evil Dead in there, and what other horror movies? A lot of people did, yeah. I mean, yeah. so basically my, my thought process was um, I wanted to make a movie sort of about my childhood growing up as like an outsider, middle kid, you know, like going to a new town and like not fitting in. Um, and then, but but in that world, there are the, you know, the, the movies that I was watching when I was that age, you know, like um, uh, Evil Dead, like Return of the Living Dead. Uh, another big one was Trick or Treat, Brain Dead, you know, yeah. um, Night of the Demons, you know, uh, you know, there was like all that, classics. Yeah, yeah, that was like in that world, you know. But mm -hmm. but you know, the actual core story of like, um, uh, you know, Brody's basically me when I, I I um had to go like live with my dad and stepmom in this like small town, um, and like this is in the nineties when you know if you had long hair and a metal shirt you were like uh really looked down on by you know especially like the jocks and the farmers and um and then like this uh you know i was getting beaten up at school a lot and then this like bigger metalhead um uh who was basically like the zach character like arrived at school and you know he was like everything i wasn't he was like bigger he, he was always always like you know down for a fight like so whenever like bullies came along he would like just like <laughs> totally go mental and like um so i had i had someone who had my back uh he was great with girls nice. uh and, and <laughs> he once seduced a girl by like quoting slayer lyrics and and, and so like that was but he was also like a bit of a piece of shit like he was a bit of like you know Whoa. he was kind of like crazy and not not sort of person i should have been looking up to at that age but um yeah it was basically based on on, on that except you know what if demons are in this world um yeah um it was like so those things that I just, it was the first concept I sort of, it was like a part of a competition to make my horror competition. And yeah. um, it was just like the first idea that came into my head. You know, looking back on it, if I knew so many people were going to watch it, maybe I would have like done something different or like uh, more elevated. But I don't know, like it's, it, it is, you know, maybe part of it is the fact that it is so crass and unapology, yeah. unapologetically gory. And um, right. Yeah. I think it's perfect the way it is. Don't change anything. Don't pull yeah. a George Lee. Don't pull a George Lucas on us, Jason. Don't go in there and change stuff. <laughs> the original movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, like one of the cool things about making the first movie is, you know, we we, we had a lot of indie bands in there. We had a lot of like underground metal bands. I think yeah. the most famous one was um the the uh, black metal band Emperor. Um, you know who, who are massive fans of but like yeah there was something about keeping it kind of underground and gritty that i think appealed to you know it didn't it didn't come off as like these guys you know like a, like a netflix middle movie like these guys are, guys are sort of poses they're just like you know you know it felt it, maybe it felt a bit more genuine i don't know but right, um right, yeah right. i think we're definitely going to do the same for the first one and there's like there's a gory scene in there that everyone that reads it is like, you can't do this. You can't like, this is too crazy. You've gone too far. And I'm like, well, if we've got, if, you, if, you, if you're saying we've gone too far, then it's probably perfect. We, we're right. we're going to do it. So yeah, exactly. we're definitely not going to compromise for like, uh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. going to have that same feel. Well, I wanted more. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, every, almost every gory shot, um, uh that we, we we did in that film i was talking to the turbo kid directors i, I love turbo kid and um, we were at a festival together oh, and they're like yeah amazing they were like, movie. Oh, it, yeah so cool which has a new zealand connection as well um because it's a new zealand canadian copro but uh they were talking about oh we had to cut the score out there wasn't time for it and i'm like you cut gore out like we we every ounce of blood that we could get is in the movie because it was just like we were just 
we, it was it was such a low budget thing it's like it's it's all going on the screen yeah you know i i, yeah, I think yeah. i scripted a lot more um you know it was like raining blood and um at one part and it's like no you can't do that you know we don't have enough uh, blood to rain blood but, yeah um, you know that's perfect the way it is man uh that's why it resonates with so many fans over the year and it's making new fans by the way and if you guys was... yeah if you guys have not seen it uh those of you that are watching the video uh, it is on peacock right now uh, i would just go out and i i would just buy the blu-ray but it's on peacock and it's on tubi if you guys want to check out death gasm which i highly Do recommend it. Yeah. Totally support Tubi. I, I love how there's they've just got so much weird shit on there. Like I, <laughs> I can never find anything I like on Netflix, but when I go on Tubi, it's like this is you know it's just so random. I, yeah. I, 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 I love those guys. Yeah, you come across stuff that you you weren't even searching for. You're just browsing, and you're like, oh my god, I didn't know that existed. Yeah. I didn't know that TV show existed <laughs> or movie. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Tubi, uh, Tubi's where it's at. But they have legitimately great great stuff on, stuff on there as well, like Deathgasm. But uh, I gotta, I gotta quickly before we get into Deb Gasm two, I quickly gotta, you know, I gotta give you a shout out. First, I gotta give my buddy Philip Tricky, OGP, another filmmaker out there. I gotta give him a shout out uh, because he absolutely went crazy and and, and adores your film uh, Guns Akimbo, man. Like <laughs> I seen a Guns Akimbo when it came out, and I was just like, this is a kick ass fucking movie, man. Samara, oh, thank you. Samara Weaving. I mean, I loved it. And he just now watched it, my buddy of mine. And he called me up. He's like, he's like, he's like, bro, have you seen Guns of Kimbo? Have you seen Guns of Kimbo? Oh my God, this is the greatest movie I've ever seen. <laughs> like he was like really loving the film. So yeah, man, that's another movie you guys should watch. Check that out. Yeah, well. that was that was um, I mean, it was uh kind of surreal looking back on it. It was such a um it, it definitely didn't go as smoothly as as, as Death Gasm, to be honest. And and right. there was a lot of stuff that like it was meant to be. A lot more like crazy uh sort of crank like with like a um like a, a, a new metal um soundtrack and it sort of got yeah. like to this point where the producers were like oh we want it to be a bit more like deadpool make it more like deadpool i'm like it's not really meant to be like deadpool but you know it's it's i'm i'm, I'm really glad people enjoy it and and working with dan and sam was just um amazing like i i just um i've been so lucky with actors to not have um you know people that are like um you know, hard to work with or divas or anything. Um, That's good. Yeah. The biggest diva actor I've had was like someone from a butter commercial, like back when I was at film school, who just like <laughs> she, she just she just went wild. But um, yeah, Dan, Dan, you know, and Sam, like both, just so easy to work with. Like no problems doing anything. Like just just nice. just totally like the stuff that we asked them to do. I'm like to Daniel Radcliffe, like at 4 a.m. in a South Auckland junkyard. And like, can you sit in this oil and rain and the freezing cold where we like um, shoot baked blood in your face? And he's like, yep, do it. You know, he's just uh, <laughs> did all his own stunts. Like what a maniac, man. Nice. Um, I really, I really hope he's the next Wolverine. Like he's, he's <laughs> I, it'd be so perfect. Um, I've been seeing that go around, you know, I was like, oh my goodness. The he's next Wolverine, cut, man. man. We oh, had to yeah. cover him up in Guns of Kimbo because he was meant to be like this kind of nerdy gamer guy. And he came out and he's like, he's he's so fucking cut. <laughs> like, <laughs> he, he gets up at like six every morning and just like exercises and runs. Like he's yeah. like this, he's like the fittest person I've ever met. Um, yeah. Yeah. Copy that. I'm seeing some cool uh, uh, posters in the background there. What do, you, what do you got back there? Oh, uh, I've got, um, I'm a huge Ray Harryhausen fan. I've got like Voyage of Sinbad and uh, the, the Valley yeah. of Gwangi um which nice. uh yeah i i i scored those like i i just i really wanted to get some like when i was working at um at peter jackson's company um they've just got all these like old ray harryhausen and old like alien like b-movie posters like originals just framed up and i always wanted to have that in my own office so i, I got i got those done um and uh, i've got the old uh, the heavy metal one there as well yeah, um, i was just getting ready to on, say that on the side there nice um and uh and yeah it's uh um i used to have like slivers so i'm not sure if you've seen slivers it's like a amazing like 70s b movie um but yeah i nice. i mainly uh, i mainly watch old movies i i don't really watch anything like post 90s much these days um uh, <laughs> there's been a cu couple of really good ones recently i, I love yeah. evil dead but um yeah i just uh you know it's like my comfort food i just i love checking on an old movie and just like feeling the yeah. vibe um yeah no, I don't blame you. And that's kind of what I've been doing a lot lately as well. <laughs> I've been kind of watching a lot of movies from like 80s, 90s, 70s, going back further. And, uh, yo, 
it's all about Clash of the Titans. That's my joint right Dude, there growing up, that. son. Love yeah, that. man. I love that for sure. Yeah. And um, Godzilla. I want to, I want to get a Godzilla poster. There's one for sale. For like, uh, I, I've got an actually original one they got from like Japan. Uh, oh, ooh. Uh, over there, like, uh, yeah. um, which is, oh. um, yeah, and, and, a, and a few Godzilla toys I got when I was in Japan. But uh, yeah. yeah, like growing up for me, like as a kid, it was like Godzilla anything by Ray Harryhausen, just like yeah. uh, King Kong. I just, uh, I, yeah. I love like monster films and like the classic yeah. stuff. I got the Godzilla shelf right over there, man. Oh, you do? Oh, man. <laughs> you can't you got, see it, um, but it's way down there. But Have yeah. you got a uh, Hedera? Uh, I always loved like uh, oh, a yeah. smog monster. It was yeah. always called the smog monster here in the New Zealand. Oh, I, mean, I want to get a Hedera, yeah. 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 I do. yeah. Kind of hard to find, but I, I, I'm i obsessed. It was, I think the first Godzilla movie I saw was um, Godzilla versus... It was, I always just call him the smog monster because that's how it was advertised here. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so batshit insane. <laughs> but so much fun. And that's so the key. Fun, yeah. That's the yeah. key. You know what I mean? So I just got done watching King Kong Lives for the first oh, time. Yes. Dude, uh, dude, it's fun. I enjoyed it's it. So good. Yeah. yeah. They give it a 3.9 out of 10. I was like, oh, come on. Come on. There's yeah, way totally. worse kaiju movies than this or monster yeah. movies than this. But yeah, I actually quite like the, the new ones, the MonsterVerse. I mean, like they're not like you know they don't have the same heart as the original ones, but like yeah. they, they, I think they've actually done quite a good job of like balancing the Hollywoodness and the you know like you know keeping it yeah. cool, you know keep keeping the mythology and yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Are you excited about uh, Godzilla minus one film coming yeah, out? Yeah, oh, totally. Japan? Yes, yeah. 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 Um, I sort of wish they'd still like have the suits. I, I, I mean, I just love the suits. Uh, I know. But, you know, uh, you know, it's know. Uh, yeah. we got a soft spot for that, you know, yeah, because I mean? it's uh, real, you know, yeah, you got a soft spot for that. This man knows his shit. Look at this yeah. guy Godzilla movies, kaiju films, martial arts, ninja movies, horror <laughs> films. That's it. You're, we are now brothers, Jason. We're brothers <laughs> now. That's it. That's it. Uh, it's it's but, amazing how much of that like culture has come from you know how much Japanese culture is like just it's so big in the West now and it's yeah. uh yeah it's it's amazing like that there's just something about uh the, the the mythology and the stories that they create over there that's just um just so like appealing and just so yeah different which is cool yeah yeah there's too many just amazing movies over there have you seen um any of the Zatoichi films or the Lone Wolf and Cub movies? Oh no, I haven't. No, I haven't. That's got to go on the list. Lone Wolf and Cub. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a Lone definitely, Wolf and definitely. Cub box set, I believe, out yeah. there. It's like six films. That's like a must. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if, you, if you if you love your gore, which you do, you're gonna yeah. love that one, man. That's like the some of the best ever. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It's yeah. so it's so weird now because it's so like almost mainstream where you're like walking down the street and like some like um some like um cool hot girl was talking about her favorite anime i'm like this is so different from when i was a kid <laughs> like it's, it's, it's 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 cool it's um you know i i i think like it's um it's cool how you can not be a like grow up as a part of that culture but still feel a part of it and it's um yeah it, it's yeah. yeah yeah copy that copy that i mean you said you gave ninja scroll the shout out earlier i was like oh shit he knows about ninja scroll that's, that's a right. that's such a weird one those there was so many like it's amazing um, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 and and like um, Akira, obviously, like yeah, um, you got the poster right there, Akira poster right over there. I, yeah. oh, man, it's, it's high up. Yeah, <laughs> still probably the best anime ever. I mean, like they keep saying they're going to do a live action adaptation. Just don't, you know. You stop. Just please don't. No, <laughs> like no. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not going to be that. It's stop. even if it was the best movie in the world, it's just never going to be as good as the anime. No. It's just mind blowing it, you know, watching in that film in 4K. It's just so mind blowing how you just like this is hand drawn animation. Yeah. It just blows blows my mind. Because you know? people don't understand that back then, like you know, cartoons were just the kids. Like when I, you know, it's like Disney, and there weren't really many. I guess there was like um, the um, you know Fritz the Cat and and um, you know so, some like animated western stuff, but I think yeah it was just how adult and crazy that was it's like well cartoons aren't for kids anymore this is you know it's yeah. a, a, an actual art form and yeah yeah, yeah. I, I remember before before it's cool to call and like everyone knows anime now anime is a lot more popular now than it was when i was growing up <laughs> yeah you know i was called a nerd you know now everyone oh, now yeah. everyone now it's cool to be an anime guy now i'm like what 
Uh, but I so remember they, so they called funny. it Japanimation. You remember that? Because no one was ready. Oh, yeah. No one was ready for anime, so they called yeah. it Japanimation, <laughs> which I thought was silly. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, back to back to, back to uh, Deathgasm, the first film, man. All of the characters, the actors in the film, they killed it. I love you know Brody, Zach, you know Medina are great. The side characters are great. Uh, the, yeah, the, the Dungeons and Dragons nerd coming out with the Hulk hands almost fell off the almost fell off the couch when he came yeah. out to fight the zombies with Hulk hands, just rolling. Uh, yeah, we were we were very yeah. lucky, and like I think a great thing was like the you know um, Milo that plays Brody and Kim Crossman that plays um, Medina. They were yeah. both like like um, actors from a young age. They were both actually Power Rangers because they um they I they, saw that. Yeah, for the Western yeah. audiences, they when they take their masks off, they're all New Zealanders these days. Right. And um and yeah, so like they were both like they've got like all these Power Rangers fan pages and everything. Yeah, that's and, um, cool. But yeah, I mean, people say like you know don't work with child actors or or young you know you know people that have been. But uh, after working with Dan and those guys, it's like people that have those guys are the most professional because they've been on film sets like their whole life and they just know they know what the you know the cameraman's doing they know what's happening with the lighting they just understand the process so well yeah um yeah. but yeah we we got very lucky i mean um just the enthusiasm from those guys is, it, it really made it and also like probably 90 percent of the the takes are one take like we we hardly got a chance wow. to do two takes yeah it's like it's impressive so we were just going so hard it was a 20-day shoot and and just yeah. having actors that were like you know could actually do that um is is was f a phenomenal it could have gone so so wrong if we yeah. didn't have the right people behind it yeah well that man that proves to the talent of your cast so yeah yeah that's awesome they pulled a they pulled a klaus kinski on you just one <laughs> one take that's it <laughs> I, I, awesome. I sort of we, we, we yeah we went that fast with like a lot of like dan's stuff as well on guns akimbo because you know he you know we were just going so fast in that film as well i, I saw how i like shooting like i like just shooting fast getting lots of camera angles um yeah trying to trying to make as much movement in the film as possible gotcha. I, I i i um obviously like inspired by you know sam Braimi, guy Ritchie, um those those people that have such a dynamic way of like directing um i remember when i first saw evil dead 2 i was like holy shit like this is like a different sort of this isn't like the other movies i've seen like there's there's something else going on here the, there's something else like so, something that you know like the, the way he uses sound and, and visuals and is so creative and um yeah. it's when i first yeah. sort of became aware of like you know uh, different styles of directing you know yeah um, yeah 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 sam raimi's a, a legend and guy Ritchie's done some great stuff i, I really enjoyed wrath of man i like that i not yet it was a dark, dark story, like a dark yeah. revenge movie. It's really good. It's really good. I I really enjoyed that one. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, before we uh, you know bring up the Kickstarter, I gotta ask uh, some what's some of your favorite metal bands? Oh man, I mean, I I got into metal and the death metal when death metal was like at its um at its peak in like the early early 90s like uh bands like cannibal corpse obituary uh day aside um i yeah you know it, it's sort of weird and then i got into like the other bands like iron maiden and black sabbath afterwards so i, I went the other way um yeah. i just like i went and, and instead of like you know pots a gateway drug i just went straight to like you know um crack <laughs> like it's just <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, but when you're 13 and listening to Cannibal Corpse and like the yeah. lyrics were so offensive and and you know it just felt evil and and cool and um yeah. uh, and yeah um you know I my my tastes are pretty diverse I love like industrial middle like Ministry like Nine Inch yeah. Nails um yeah Ministry uh you know there's like a big wave of like new death metal and extreme bands like Two Mold and um, Witch Vomit Blood Incantation um doing like really different things like involving like themes of like aliens and and you know um uh, um astral travel and involving like really weird different stuff yeah. uh, you know and in, into the middle which is great um uh yeah i mean the, the great you know like i love a lot of stoner middle um i I'm, I'm sort of like just I, I sort of love all genres i go through different things i went through like a real sort of 
right back to like the seventies stuff, just listening to like Black Sabbath and and um uh, and, yeah. and Led Zeppelin and like Deep Purple yeah. and those bands like constantly. Um, Rainbow, such a yeah. Rainbow, yeah. There's such a yeah. vibe, you know. Back then, it was yeah. um, it was you know, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, Black Sabbath didn't even really know that they were metal at the time. They were just like <laughs> we're, we're we're rock and roll, but like, yeah. you know, the, you listen to them back then. It's like this is, I, yeah. yeah um, I, I think if I was going to be on a desert island and can only select like you know one CD, it would be Black Sabbath Volume Four. You know, I could just listen to that forever. Um, Classic, yeah, yeah. You know, um, yeah. But there's just so much variety uh, with metal. You know, there's like so many different genres of subgenres of subgenres. You got a group like Nile. You know, there's yeah. things about you know Egyptology and stuff like that. You know, uh, but you yeah. said you said Ministry earlier. One of my favorite Ministry songs is called. Punch in the face. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> Uncle Al, he's such a legend, and um, I don't know how he's still alive, man. Um, yeah. But I, I heard like for their uh, follow up to um, uh, um, Psalm sixty nine, like he basically spent the whole that they gave him like all this money to make the album, and he spent it all on smack. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> it's just oh my god, like um, but yeah, I yeah. mean, just uh, in yeah. incredible. Like I don't know how someone can just be that crazy but also be such an amazing musician it, it always uh, blows my mind yeah um, yeah yeah uh any live concerts some of your favorite concerts you've ever been to oh my, my first concert was pantera like back in the night yes. uh, early 2000s and like you know pantera just um they really flew the flag for like pure metal back in the 90s when everyone else yeah. was going new metal they were they were um you know it was yeah, an amazing gig like it was it was crazy because me and my friends all had long hair and we uh, went to this local we were from a small town but we did a road trip to the city and as soon as we got out all these skinheads like so like um they were off to the same concert and they were like uh you, you, know, you long-haired ladies look at you like threatening to beat us up and it's like dude we're going to the same concert but listen to the same music what the fuck is wrong with you yeah um yeah. you know but it was yeah it, it was a, a wild wild gig it was uh yeah. um uh sing sabbath like in the reunion tour was uh, the, the problem of being in new zealand is we we really didn't get, we, you know, you can't go to the same amount of concerts as like, no one really comes here. Um, uh, yeah, definitely not like, you know, we don't have all yeah. the big festivals and stuff, but um, yeah, um, seeing um, oh, one of my favorites, um, uh, King Diamond was awesome, uh, nice. Iron Maiden. Um, <sighs> um, yeah, there's so many bands that I, that I, you know, want to see though that I just haven't yeah. had the chance, and um, yeah. yeah, hopefully I get to go over the seasons. And that's see that's epic that you got to see Pantera. That's my group, yeah, right there, man. Yeah, five well, minutes alone, yeah. domination. Let's go. That's my that's my group right there, man. How cool is that? Yeah, and it was before Dimebag, uh, obviously. Like uh, I think pretty pretty soon before that, um, it was like the last yeah. sort of like international tour before that, and just sort of seeing them on stage together. It's like if I hadn't known, like what a yeah. You know what? A, what a moment that was going to be. That um, yeah, but yeah. it was um, yeah. Two, I mean, two I of the ones that uh, that I've seen live that were just amazing live uh, uh, metal concert performances was from Motorhead. Oh and really? Judas Priest blew me away, man. Uh, yeah, I couldn't believe it, man. You know, Rob Halford's like at this point he's six hundred and eighty-five years old, still yeah. walking out there with the cane, man, and still built in. You know, that still guy is, uh, amazing. Just, just like a pioneer as well. And I, I, I yeah. always, I, I remember in the nineties when he came out and like, and everyone was like surprised. And then you go back and look at the, all their videos. And he's like wearing all the leather, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, are you really that shocked? Like, but the fact that he bought that has he sort of because before that, like middle middle bands weren't really wearing like a lot of the leather and a lot of all of that stuff, like in the spikes. Yeah. He, yeah. he pioneered a lot of that stuff and um it's it's just kind of yeah kind of crazy. yeah 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 i love uh love priest painkiller is yeah is just that just makes your your ears and your eyes bleed and you love it yeah, yeah. love painkiller yeah but i got some filmmaker questions for you uh what was some of the motivations what inspired you to become a filmmaker and get into the industry oh man it's uh it's just one of those things that i I was ninja never, movies right ninja movies yeah <laughs> uh, well i mean i was just always i i grew up like i had a single mom and i i had like i was one of those just like alone kids all the time so i just i spent a lot, a lot of time just watching tv i would watch anything just like just 
soap operas like talk yeah. shows i would just always watch so it's just like that was just my escape really and yeah. just i it became you know the only thing i was interested in so you know i i dropped out of high school at 16 and then my first i don't know how i managed to do it but I, my first job out of high school was at a local tv station like editing um i got to edit the music show and so i'd get like music clips from bands and i'd see like you know crazy clips like from up and coming bands like i remember seeing like blink 182 and marilyn manson videos before they were big um yeah and, and just wow. like you know I, um before you know before they were like a lot of people had seen those and just yeah i i was really lucky to you know i get that i've yeah, been in the film industry since i was like you know 16 17 and just um it's just i couldn't do something real um because it's just it's just such a, it's an industry full of freaks and geeks you know we're just misfits um you know i see people going to work in suits and it's like man i just i could never do that um uh but yeah i think just like you know a, a lot of those like movies like the um you know the godzilla movies seeing like uh, the older horror movies, um, I, I think, yeah, just, it just, you yeah, like some, uh, John Carpenter films? Oh, dude, John, John Carpenter is just the best. Uh, his, his films again, are just like, I can just, I can just chuck one of his films on any time. It doesn't matter how many times I've seen it. Like, uh, um, you know, some of my favorites, like, you know, Prince of Darkness, uh, Mouth yes. of Madness, some of, some yes. of his less well-known ones, like, yeah. uh, um, uh, I love Halloween, but Halloween's been copied so much by everyone else that it's like, yeah, it, 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 yeah. it's like you sort of see some things coming, but I mean, it's still just a, a, a amazing film, yeah. but like, uh, yeah, I mean, he's like a, just an American, um, you know, legend, uh, you know, he, he should be, yeah, a lot, a lot more sort of well-respected. Yeah, than let's make is. the statue and, now. Let's, let's dude, make the statue. It, <laughs> um <laughs> yeah um and growing up like uh seeing like um just like sort of the weirder stuff like um uh stuart gordon movies like you know reanimator yeah. um uh, uh um apparently stuart was a fan of death Gasm. someone told me he had seen it and, and enjoyed it and he said if anyone was going to do like a, a reanimator sequel it would be it would be that guy and yeah and, uh, nice. yeah i'm not sure if that's true or not but it's still it's, it warms warms my heart um that's a huge compliment man yeah wow. um you know like you know growing up i would just go into the video shop and just uh, every vhs i just had to watch all of them so it's um just yeah. uh yeah such a wide range i mean obviously the classics like the texas chainsaw massacre i'm a big texas chainsaw massacre 2 advocate like I yes think that movie is, uh, yes um needs more love like the first one's obviously like just a, a stone yeah. cold classic but yeah. um uh two just is its own yeah. beast you know you've got like um uh just just so much weird stuff happening in that film and oh man <laughs> chainsaw fight leatherface is, leatherface dennis has a hopper. chainsaw fight with <laughs> dennis, dennis hopper. hopper what else do you want <clears throat> so good but hooper he he explains it he goes why would i remake the same movie again yeah that's why he went dark comedy yes yeah because exactly. he's like why why would i do the exact same movie again <laughs> You Which know? is such a great point, you know. I think, yeah. um, and it's something like you know, with Deathgasm to uh, you know, we, we're sort of going a little bit the same route. We, you know, it is it is like a little bit meta. We're like making fun of the first movie, or like you know, um, <laughs> nice. a little bit. Um, you know, I love how Joe Dante did that with Gremlins and Gremlins Two, and and yeah, like the the, the yeah. second, you know, the second one wasn't really a rehash of the first one. It was it was more like everything in the first one. They 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 took and made fun of and i mean there's so many gags in that movie um <laughs> are they still doing that gremlins remake movie or uh, reboot are they still doing that i don't know it's it's one of those things i um you know i just i struggle you know i i mean i actually quite enjoyed the hellraiser remake i thought that was actually like had a really cool vibe yeah um uh but you know it's it's like you know the halloween movies and and you know the new texas chance massacres like there's just something yeah I don't, I don't know i can't really explain and it, not not to say that bad movies or anything and and i, I love it's the, missing the something base and it's missing yeah something, yeah um 
you know and and obviously the halloween series is like so spotty anyway like you know, i mean <laughs> i i was there on the ground when halloween 6 came out i waited i was a massive halloween fan i had like a donald pleasant shrine in my room yeah. when i was a kid and i was like waiting for halloween 6 and then i was like what is this <laughs> I just, could, just could not believe oh uh, what's your thoughts on um the original exorcist uh film and the reboot trilogy requel that's coming out soon what, what's your yeah i mean it's like you know it, it's it's one of those things again it, it, you know you never if i was remaking a film it would be of like something that is was kind of like not great and and that you can sort of like do something different with like um um things something like um you know highlander whereas like it's i mean it's a great film but there's some like quite cheesy like there, there is some like kind of hokey stuff in there you yeah, know, it, that feels like it needs a remake. Whereas the Exorcist, I mean, it's the greatest fucking horror movie of all time. Like, you're never gonna, I don't know what, if you're not going to make it different or, you know, you're not gonna be able to ever make it better than that. Right. Then why? Yeah. Like, I, I, but, you know, um, I'll, I'll watch them and, uh, you know, it, yeah. I mean, it's had its fair share of like reboots and everything anyway. Right. Right. Yeah, hopefully the new Highlander movie is good. I, I'm a huge fan of the old Highlander film, but uh, yeah, I mean, it has what I it's what the, the cheesy thing I love about that movie is just the amount of Queen songs in there. And then you've got, <laughs> there's a moment where Christopher Lambert actually looks at the camera and like looks straight at the camera and says, It's a kind of magic. And yeah. then, it, it's a kind of magic comes on. I'm like, dude, this is like one long video clip. But um, <laughs> I kind of love that about yeah. it, though. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's love the original movie. Highlander. Hopefully, the new one coming out, they uh, get it right. Because again, you talk about spotty sequel franchise, Highlander is one of them. There is no continuity in those dude. sequels at all. <laughs> I kind of love Highlander 2 for how bad shit it is. It's just, uh, but I still, yeah, it's such a weird direction. It's fun. It's entertaining. Yeah. And Highlander 2 is entertaining. So, yeah, um, it is. I think the best thing I love, the thing I love most about Highlander uh, is like uh, um, Clancy Brown. Just, uh, I mean, I'm a massive fan of Clancy Brown. Everything Kurgan. he's in is just, yeah. Yeah, man. Kent Kurgan's one of the greatest, probably movie villains. Yeah. Uh, of all time. Yeah. Did you ever so, watch Carnival? You know, I was always curious about that show. Is, is that uh, was that on Showtime HBO? I think it was HBO. Yeah, he he's so great. He he's like this evil priest and and kind of oh, and just like oh man, so, it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's a uh, check it out, man. Um, okay, yeah, okay, massive uh, Clancy Brown fan. <laughs> nice. Does it have a good like beginning to the to to the end? Is there or is it like? No, it ends on a cliffhanger, and they never made anything else. And it ends on like the most cliffhangery cliffhanger oh. ever. Like you're like what the hell where is this gonna go and then yeah. just, just um they didn't renew it it was i think there was gonna be a comic book but oh. um hmm. never happened unfortunately um man but i'll still a, check it out though just for clancy yeah yeah just for was, clancy yeah yeah i think it was the most expensive yeah. series at the time it was the most expensive i guess now we're just so used to like really like big budget series but um right so for everybody watching this video right now, Jason, uh, let them know the plot synopsis for Deathgasm 2 Gormageddon. Yeah, so so basically the the, the, the plot is like uh, we pick up after the main character Brody. So at the end of the first movie, um, you know, he's uh he's he's um he saved the world from, um, you know, the, this demonic plague, which he caused, <laughs> um, you know, he gets the girl, um, everything's sort of happy, uh, except as like, you know, his best friends did. Um, and, um, the, the second movie picks up like 10 years afterwards where he's like, he's unemployed. Um, uh, Medina's broken up with him. Um, he's like, you know, going to the welfare office, just like doing nothing of his life. Um, and he sees this ad for like a battle of the bands and you know um he's about to get evicted um and he's like you know this is a way that i can get medina back this is a way that i can i can I, I, I get the band back together you know and actually make something of myself um and win the battle of the bands and but he doesn't have a band because i've been killed off in the first film so right. he has to take the same, um, you know, the, the, the magic pages that he had from the first film. <laughs> he uses those to resurrect them, um, like Pet Cemetery or Reanimator style. And obviously, shit uh, goes sideways real fast. Um, right. You know, I mean, he's a great character. He he is kind of dumb though. Like he is, in a, you know, he 
you know they do make really bad decisions and that's something yeah. that's like uh we still keep intact but um if if the first one was like sort of on the demonic possession evil dead sort of side this this uh movie is more like a reanimator um, yeah you know All right. uh well because we've got the device we've got this like this book of like you know magical music music pages but like the, the thing is if you play different parts of it there's not just one spell to like raise demons there's other spells to raise the dead and all these you know uh yeah. all these other things that the magic can do so uh, um yeah le leaning into that um and you know having fun with like our our version of undead is like very different i always love in return of the living dead how they had um they they changed the lore a bit you know they changed that so so we're doing that as well and um nice, and, 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 nice. yeah but it's like what would you do if your best friend was a zombie and and you are trying to make him play in a band with you <laughs> awesome awesome well i'm sure it's gonna be fucking wild man <laughs> it is gonna be wild just like this little uh little little, little screenshot i'm showing right here it's gonna be yeah. fucking wild and speaking of wild uh all of you badasses out there hey click on the description box below to check out the kickstarter that's right the link will be there click on it share it around that's right support it there's going to be tons of perks i'm going to show some of them in a second but before we show the perks and get into it Holy shit, there is a possibility the more money this Kickstarter makes and more support that you badasses show to this movie, you can have Steve Kostinsky a part of this, man. FX Maestro, I mean, man, Psycho, Gore, Psycho Gorman, The Void. Man, I can't wait to see the practical effects for this movie. I, I just, I, I'm just fanning boying out because like that, that guy is just, um, he's like splatter horror royalty you know it, it's, yeah. it's it's someone who's I, I i sort of like um you know comes from a you know watch the same films as i did and and just like he's been a pioneer of like you know splatter horror is a very different genre it's not a not not, not always like um even horror fans you know sometimes don't enjoy splatter comedy and that's uh so it's um yeah it's great to see someone flying the the, the splitter flag <laughs> yeah yeah but this is amazing man you get him involved uh the more support uh people show fan show for uh the kickstarter that is absolutely amazing and also a part of the kickstarter producer bj mcdonald BJ. that's right studio 666 and more hatchet three man he's involved i saw some quotes some uh, some interviews and he's extremely excited to be a part of this project and if he's excited hey we, he he knows his shit he knows Dude. you know that he's not gonna he's not gonna waste his time with bullshit okay yeah. he sees like oh this is gonna be fucking amazing so yeah it's cool to see that he's a part of it as totally well. i mean i'm just blown away that like you know he's like oh, man i'm such a fan i'm like dude really like it's uh it, it's just so so crazy to um you know be like rubbing shoulders with with people like that and um yeah again it's like you know someone who's like just their passion for like both metal and horror just comes across in everything they do um uh and and just such such a you know um uh, you know it always comes down to passion especially when you're working on indie films you know you yeah. you need to work with people that are just really into it because it's you know it's 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 hard work you know and it's yeah. um and you have the 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 perfect uh distribution company right here raven banner the banner of badassity baby that's right you love these guys like um you know they, they were massive supporters of the first death gasm i remember going over to toronto and, and meeting them and uh and just like you know it's like their job but they just they, they're doing it because they love it they love yeah. horror they love genre it's um yeah. and you know that they've really um uh andrew hunt our producer from raven banners has done an amazing job like setting up all the rewards and you know those guys are going to come through of some sick like uh physical uh releases and oh yeah you know, they they you know so when, we, when we're like we've, we've got all this stuff it's like no we, we can actually do this we can like we can make like you know amazing dvd packages t-shirts yeah. like vhs all this stuff yes and for all you metalheads out there nuclear blast records will get involved with creating and helping to make the badass soundtrack for the film the more you support the more awesome the movie will become and only you guys can make it happen we only we can make it happen that's right 
So I'm going to bring up the Kickstarter right here so you guys can look along with us and see some of the perks. Yeah, I mean, just with any of the perks, I'm just going to say, like, anyone anyone supporting the Kickstarter at any level is, like, I, I, I don't consider it, like, you know, not so much crowdfunding. It's, I, I consider everyone who pledges, like, a, a, a producer, you know, that they're, you know, they are a part of the film and, um, and it's, like... Uh, yeah, so so you know in, anyone that you know gets involved, it's uh you know you I've, you've got my back. I owe you a favor, you know. Basically, you're you're a you're a part of the film, and uh, yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's um it's an amazing yeah. thing. It's 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 really like I, I love the idea of just going outside, you know, the 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 normal you know uh, way of making a horror film of making any film. Um, you know, bypassing like all the, the the bullshit and the yes, you know the the CD like uh, the Harvey Weinstein type characters and just like actually just you know let's put it back to the people, put yeah. the people in charge of what they want to see. Yeah. Well, first of all, I love this poster. It's, 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 <laughs> Evil it's comes bad. again. Look at that. I, I love <laughs> I love this poster. I'm surprised you didn't put uh, Electric Boogaloo down here. I'm surprised <laughs> yeah. that didn't happen. But love the poster. This is this is oh man, this would what brings people to the dance. And as uh, you can see up here, people are already coming to the dance. They have already started backing the movie. That's right. We got to reach our goal. The more people do it, we got to reach our goal. So let's go through some of the perks. And all it is, guys, just to get started, just to get your name. That's right. Your name is going to be in the credits of this badassity. That's right. $10. That's it. You get a thank you. In the credits, that's all you guys need to pledge is ten dollars. But if you want a little bit more, you got to give a little bit more here. So we're just gonna go through some of the perks right here, some of the bigger perks. But yeah, look at this 4K Steelbook Blu-ray of the film. I mean, this is phenomenal. Look at this. But yeah, let's just go through. Yeah, so ten dollars. There you go. Thank you in the credits. I mean, who doesn't want their name in the credits of something badass and awesome, right? Twenty-five. You get a digital copy. Thank you. Deathgasm Two Mini Poster. You get a Blu-ray and a thank you still in the credits. Uh, from from this tier up, from ten dollars up, everyone's name will still be in the credits, correct? Yeah, totally. Okay. I mean, it's uh, and yeah, I mean, we uh, just um, yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those things where we're just like so thankful for people supporting at any level. Um, yeah. You know, uh, the thing is, it isn't like American dollars, which is like you know we've got fans all over the world that are in countries where like you know. 50 us i think 50 us dollars is like a hundred dollars new zealand you know so it's, it's kind of crazy so you know it's it's like you know anyone that that pledges at any level is like you are you know you're a chad you're a you're a part of this journey and uh, yeah. yeah 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 and only you guys can make it happen but yeah look at these other tiers here blu-ray two disc special edition blu-ray you get a t-shirt digital copy soundtrack look at that Ooh. Oh, vinyl! Holy shit! Vinyl yeah, soundtrack. How with the gate with the gatefold sleeve? What? This is amazing. Oh, that is awesome. vinyl. Uh, I'm a massive uh, fan yeah. of like physical stuff, and um, uh, yeah, it's it's That's um, amazing. I think the sound we had a, a soundtrack for the first film released um by Deathworks Records, and it was yeah hugely pop popular. You know, it was um, just so cool seeing yeah like like playing. Those, those bands on that format um and, and the art and everything it's it's yeah so cool i think That's we're gonna have cassette amazing. tapes as well uh really you're gonna yeah. do cassette tapes i think so yeah that's uh, amazing um, yeah. amazing but here we go again uh the 4k blu-ray steelbook you know this is going to be extremely rare so it's definitely worth it you get this merch pack here t-shirt with everything and more another merch pack it just keeps on building you get a polaroid there we go. Yeah. Oh, signed from the cast. Check that out. You get an autograph from the cast. That is amazing. Yeah. There um, you go. And uh, and oh, if you go down, there's like uh, this is when it gets crazy. Like yeah, so like wardrobe and props. Um, That's like, what's uh, up. Yeah. That's amazing. Yes. There you go. They will be covered in blood. Just like uh, people got to expect that. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, uh, Brody's jean jacket, maybe Medina's ripped T-shirt, perhaps Zach studded G-string. <laughs> Fuck yeah! No, I'm I'm keeping that for myself. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, well, sorry. I, 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 sorry, I understand. I understand. <laughs> but yeah, this is amazing. Props from the movie. 
Look at this. Oh, look at that. I love that price <laughs> price there for the spawn of Satan. This is everything. <laughs> this is everything. Blu-ray, steelbook, uh, 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 vinyl. And I like I like this. Your name in in graffiti in the movie. Yeah. Look at I mean, that. Which, How which that helps us out as well because we need uh we need graffiti anyway. So why not put someone's uh you know, I always love Easter eggs in films, like yeah. little references, and it's um it's just uh yeah, it's it's it's, it's yeah. a cool thing. Like with some of the rewards, like you know, the name of graffiti, there's also a reward below it, like um your photo and your name said on screen. Um we will it will be in the tone of the film, so you may be mocked. <laughs> that is that is amazing. Look at uh, that. So, you have your picture in the yeah. movie too. Look at that. Picture in the movie. Your name said in the movie. Look at that. How you say you could be in the dialogue of the film. Look at that. Yes. Talk about this one right here, Jason. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, film slate, um, uh, digital. So I guess you get to keep the the, the film slate. Um, uh, yeah, um, that's amazing. Which is, which is cool. I've never got to kill. I think like some directors get to keep their own film slates. So I've never, I've never been given one or a chair. I want one of those chairs. You know. You yeah. See, like, um, yeah. You know, Rob Zombie's name on a chair. I guess uh, I'm not at Rob Zombie level, but I've always wanted like a director's chair with my name on it. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. On guns you deserve Kevin, it. They keep sitting in my chair, like I keep kicking people out of it. It's like, dude. Um, uh, More... Oh, yeah, gory props. Um, oh, look at that. How cool is that? You get the go like, it's, it's... So we're talking jibs. You get to take home the jibs. <laughs> yeah. You know That's it. amazing. <laughs> Severed head, impaled rectum. Come on. <laughs> this is worth it. This is worth it. it and now this is like, holy shit, associate producer credit in the movie. Yeah. Wow. Wow, plus yeah, all the yeah. other goodies. Plus all the other goodies. Look at that. How amazing is that? Oh now, now, now see, now you're wishing I could come out there and travel to New Zealand. Because I would love a death scene in your movie, Jason. But <laughs> but well, it's uh, the thing is we're gonna make it happen no matter where someone is. Like uh we've got uh, some that's the cool thing about having like uh BJ and Steve in uh, North America. Um yeah. You know, so the idea is like, um, even for for international people, we're still gonna uh, do the cameo. If if we say that you're gonna get killed in the movie, um, you're gonna get killed in the movie, and we're gonna make it extra gross. Like it's gonna yes. be, uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. So amazing, uh, amazing. Yeah, look at that. Plus um, all the goodies. Plus you get that too. I mean, how cool is this? You guys. I actually might it. buy that one myself and just uh and and, and kill myself. <laughs> <one of my laughs> <movies> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> hey, you gotta have director's cameo get killed. You gotta do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. An executive producer credit. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Get an executive producer credit in the opening credits of the film, plus an invite to the Films Festival world premiere. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, look at that beautiful, gorgeous, blood red, tasty vinyl. It's tasty. Yeah. Look at like that. Nice. Yeah. Woohoo. Now what's going uh, what's going oh, on here? So, yeah, <laughs> so this is this is actually like a, it's got a dual purpose. So also like you know you help support the film, but it also stops um it stops like yeah. death and fans from breeding, which is uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is like you know I think that helps out everyone. Uh, I think so. Industry. Yeah, <laughs> um, that was, that was going to be my catchphrase for that's, them. But uh, that's you know, hilarious. Um, uh, yeah. I'm not sure what color they're going to be. I guess like red. Uh, <laughs> you know, ma maybe like you know vein. I don't know. What do you do? We'll yeah, do something oh, crazy that's, with them. That's fucking uh, amazing. Man. Maybe like a little spiked, uh, <laughs> spiked <laughs> wristband sort of thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's fucking amazing. But these are amazing perks, uh, especially for the price. But I mean, uh, we understand uh, if you can't do the upper tiers, everybody watching right now. But you got, I mean, hey, ten dollars. Your name is in the credits, and you help support something that you know you are guaranteed. That's right, guaranteed because of all the talent involved. That's right. This is going to be badass, gory, amazing, hilarious. Look at the talent that's involved. Look at all of this talent. That's right. Come on. Nuclear Blast is going to be doing the soundtrack, baby. Let's go. Yeah, this is going to be amazing. So again, check the link in the description box below. Go to the Kickstarter. Show some support. We need more motherfucking movies like this. We need it out there. We got to spread the word, share the link to your friends, get it out there. That's right. Cause you're, you're pretty much guaranteed. Trust me that Deathgasm two gore Mageddon, not only is it going to be brutal baby, but it's going to be brutal as fuck. That's right. <laughs> Jason, thank you so much for being here, brother. I would talk, Hey, 
like I said, you're we're brothers now. I could talk to you about movies all day. <laughs> but oh, I know so you're crazy idea. busy, man. I know you're crazy, <laughs> no, crazy I, Thank I've you always so much. Been, for being here. I forget to talk about my own movie. I just like start chatting about like random like uh, Ninja Scroll or something. But yeah, man, it's amazing talking to you. And uh, thank you yeah. so much for the time. Yes, yes. But don't go anywhere, Jason. But all you badasses, we'll see you on the next one. Keep listening to metal. Keep the horror genre sky high. Keep it up there. Raise it up. Support it. Keep it strong, baby. And don't forget to support Deathgasm 2. You're not going to regret it. All right, guys. Take care. And uh, let's see. Death death to false metal. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's a surf one. Yeah, uh, <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. Brother, Brotherhood of Steel. Right, yeah, right Jason? Right. Brotherhood of Steel. Baby. <laughs> all right. All right. Take care, guys. Deathgasm has been brought to you from the metal gods, from the bowels of hell, to quench our thirst of bloody brutality. Were you able to handle it? We don't know. Let us know what you thought in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. Like, Share, subscribe, like, share, subscribe, like, share, subscribe.